Hello, my name is Dr. Bernard Branson. Today, we'll be talking about interpreting results of the HIV testing algorithm that starts with the fourth generation assay. This presentation was developed in collaboration with Alyssa Guido and Dr. Stephen Klotz from the Arizona AIDS Education and Training Center. Support for this project is from the Pacific AIDS Education and Training Center in the California Department of Public Health Office of AIDS. In terms of HIV tests and their generations, they have evolved using different sources of antigens to detect antibodies, and they employ different principles for detection. They've been grouped into generations, which are really based on the test principles, regardless of the time when the tests were introduced. In terms of the generations, the first generation test for its antigen used whole viral lysate, and the technology detected only IgG antibodies. Uh, this is the 30th anniversary in 2015 of the introduction of the EIA, but the Western blot and the immunofluorescent assay used for confirmation are also first generation assays. Second generation tests use a different antigen, synthetic peptides, but they also detect only IgG antibody. I think it's important to recognize that most of the rapid HIV tests that are currently available in the United States are second generation tests that detect IgG antibodies. Uh, the FDA-approved HIV-1, HIV-2 antibody differentiation assay is also a second-generation test detecting only IgG antibodies. Uh, the more recently approved Genius HIV-1-2 supplemental assay approved by the FDA in October 2014 is again a second-generation assay so that the antibody tests that are used as part of this algorithm are second-generation tests following a fourth-generation initial assay. The Genius, which is the fourth generation assay, um, is somewhat different than the current Western blot in that it has different uh, peptides that it detects for HIV-1 and HIV-2. There are two GP36 and GP140 bands for HIV-2 detection and four P31, GP160, P24, and GP41 for detection of HIV-1 with the Genius assay. The third generation tests detect both IgM and IgG antibodies. This represented a significant improvement uh, because of the ability to detect infection earlier. Uh, there are an EIA, a rapid test, the unigold recombinant that is based on the third generation principle, and then two other multi-platform analyzers, the Siemens Advia Centaur and the Orthovitros, that can be used for third generation testing. The fourth generation is the most recent development assay, and the first of those was approved in 2010 by the FDA. The fourth generation assay detects IgM antibodies, IgG antibodies, and also P24 antigen. Uh, the four currently FDA approved fourth generation tests include the Abbott Architect, the Biorad antigen antibody combo assay, the determined rapid test, and the determined rapid test has a characteristic of being able to detect separately HIV antibody in one location, P24 antigen in a second location, location as well as the internal control, and the most recently approved Siemens Advia Centaur chemiluminescent assay uh, in 2015 approved for use with serum specimens. Uh, there's also now the so-called fifth generation HIV antigen antibody combination assay. This is the Bioplex test. It detects and distinguishes between HIV-1 antibodies, HIV-2 antibodies, and P24 antigen. The other tests only tell you positive or negative. They don't tell you which component caused the test to be positive. Uh, this Bioplex does indicate specifically which antibody or antigen cause the test to be reactive. In terms of how these generations fit in the schema of detection of laboratory markers, HIV infection occurs at point zero as marked on the timeline on this slide. The first laboratory marker to appear is HIV RNA in plasma, which generally is detectable between 10 and 14 days after the time infection occurs. Next, P24 antigen becomes detectable at approximately five days after the appearance of HIV RNA or about 15 days after the onset of HIV infection. Subsequently, HIV antibody begins to develop, and that antibody, as it begins in circulation, complexes with P24 antigen, so the P24 antigen diminishes as the antibody appears. IgM antibody is the first to appear at about 21 days after the time of infection, and later IgG antibody, the second antibody to develop in response to infection, shows up at about 42 to 45 days after the time of infection. 
Therefore, you can see that the generations or the different generations of assays detect infection at different time periods. So the first generation assay detects infection at approximately 50 to 55 days after the time of infection. The second generation assay somewhat sooner, 42 to 45 days. The third generation assay considerably sooner in about 21 or 22 days after infection because of its ability to detect IgM. And then the fourth generation combination assay detects infection at the earliest time at about 15 days or 16 days after the time of infection. Um, CDC has done an evaluation in order to look at basically what the sequence of all the currently FDA approved antibody and antigen tests are and it, their ability to detect infection. On this slide, we'll compare these different tests and their ability to detect infection with the time when the Western blot, the former confirmatory assay, turns positive. So the Western blot here is, indicates positivity at time zero, and the tests are then compared with the Western blot positivity. The Vironostica assay, which was the most widely used EIA in the United States until 2007, uh, becomes positive at about two days after the Western blot turns positive, which made the Western blot a good confirmatory assay. Although it's not still available on the market, I mention it because many of the other assays use the Vironostica as their comparison assay for sensitivity and for specificity. The lateral flow CLIA waved rapid tests, including the Clearview Complete and StatPak, the Unigold and the OraQuick test, detect infection between one and five days between the time the before the time that the western blot turns positive. Uh, the flow-through rapid HIV tests, including the Reveal, the Multispot, and the Insti, detect infection between 5 and 10 days before the western blot turns positive. The laboratory-based third-generation assays detect infection at about two weeks before the time the before the time that the western blot becomes positive, and the fourth generation assay is nearly three weeks before the time that the western blot turns positive. You'll notice that the rapid uh, fourth generation assay, the determined combo, detects infection slightly earlier than the fourth, third generation assays, but not as soon as the laboratory-based fourth generation assays. Finally, the Aptima RNA assay detects infection when RNA first appears at about 26 days before the time that the Western blot first turns positive. This gives some indication of what the different, essentially, window periods would be with these different assays, and the reason the fourth generation assay is important, because of how soon it detects infection after the time infection occurs, nearly three weeks before the confirmatory test, the Western blot actually would be positive in an individual with HIV infection. When the genius or the multi-spot supplemental assay are used as part of the diagnostic algorithm, their timing, because of the nature of the number of markers that have to be positive, are very similar to the time that the Western blot turns positive within about one or two days of the time of Western blot positivity. This depicts now the new diagnostic algorithm that has been recommended since June 2014. Testing begins with the fourth generation HIV-1-2 antibody antigen combination immunoassay. If that test is negative, the specimen is considered negative for HIV. If that test is positive, it then should be followed by an antibody assay, preferably an antibody assay that differentiates HIV-1 from HIV-2 antibodies. Remember that these are IgG or second generation assays, and so they will not detect infection as early as the fourth generation assay will do that. If the specimen is positive for either HIV-1 or HIV-2 antibodies, it is considered positive for HIV. The individual should then enter care and the subsequent testing. However, if the antibody assay is negative after a positive fourth generation assay, the specimen should then go on to be tested with RNA, the nucleic acid test, in order to look for the presence of acute HIV infection which is defined as the presence of HIV RNA before antibodies develop in an individual who has become infected. That brings us to our first case study. This is a 38-year-old male who presents to the emergency department with diarrhea and vomiting. His social history reveals that he has had one male sex partner for the past three months. He accepts HIV screening when it's offered, and his test results are shown as follows. His HIV-1-2 antibody antigen combo assay result is reactive. His HIV-1 antibody and his HIV-2 antibody on the differentiation assay are both non-reactive. Please select from your screen, from the answers on the screen, what the possible explanations are for these results. Do they mean the patient has AIDS, 
the patient has acute HIV infection, that his initial test result is false positive, or the possible explanations some combination of those above. Please select the answer that is appropriate, and after you've selected the answer, click Submit. The correct answer in this circumstance is E, both B and C. Either the patient has acute HIV infection or the initial test result is false positive. Remember that the fourth generation test detects infection before the antibody tests detect infection, and so an individual can have either IgM antibodies or HIV P24 antigen present uh, as a result of acute HIV infection and have a negative follow-up antibody test. We'll now continue with this case study and ask, in this circumstance, what would you do next in order to resolve exactly what is going on? Again, select your answer from the screen. Would you diagnose this patient as HIV positive and link him to his local Ryan White clinic? Would you order an RNA test? Would you tell the patient to return in three months for repeat testing, or would you order a Western blot? Please select your answer and click Submit. In this circumstance, the correct answer is B, order an RNA test. You would need to do a nucleic acid test for HIV RNA in order to determine whether acute infection is present. You would not give this person a diagnosis of HIV positive on the basis of a single test result. In terms of having a patient return in three months for repeat testing, that would have formerly been the recommendation with an individual who had uh, indeterminate or uh, uh, Western blot used as a confirmatory assay, but we can detect infection, and in particular acute infection, much sooner by doing an RNA test. The important consideration here about ordering a nucleic acid test for HIV RNA is that there are qualitative tests and the quantitative viral load test. The Aptima HIV-1 qualitative RNA assay is the only nucleic acid test that is approved by the FDA for HIV diagnosis. However, many clinicians would want an HIV viral load test, and these are more widely available in hospitals. Under FDA and CLIA regulations, a clinician can order the HIV-1 viral load test in order to resolve these kinds of results where you have a positive first assay, fourth generation, and negative antibody test, but laboratories cannot use a viral load automatically as a reflex part of the algorithm. We'll now go back on this case study and look at a potentially different outcome. After the initial fourth generation is positive, we looked at an individual, we ordered his RNA assay, and the results come back as you see on the screen. The quantitative PCR is less than 20, the quantitative is less than 1.3 log, and it is interpreted as RNA not detected. In this circumstance, how would you interpret this patient's test results? Please select the result from the screen. This patient is HIV negative, the patient has acute HIV infection, the patient is HIV positive but not acute, or more testing is needed to make the diagnosis. Please select the answer and click Submit. The correct answer in this scenario, A, is that the patient is HIV negative. An individual who has a reactive fourth generation assay, a negative antibody test, and a negative RNA test for HIV means that the first fourth generation test, in fact, was false positive and the individual is not infected with HIV. Let's look at this. We'll look at the same case of number one, but now we're going to have a different HIV RNA result that comes back. So here is an individual with a positive fourth generation assay, a negative antibody test, and this time his result comes back as a quantitative PCR RNA of 5,700,000 copies, which is equivalent to 6.8 log in a viral load assay. And his interpretation, quantitative PCR, is RNA detected. How would you interpret now these results for this particular patient? Please select your answer from the screen and hit submit. This sequence of test results indicates that B is the correct answer. The patient has acute HIV infection. An individual with a reactive fourth generation assay, a negative antibody test, and a positive RNA test, in particular with a high viral load, as in this circumstance, indicates that an individual is at a very early stage of HIV infection, known as acute HIV infection. We're going to go on to our next case study. In case study two is a 21-year-old man who has sex with men, and he presents with lymphadenopathy and a rash at an urgent care center. He discloses that he has also used injection drugs. He accepts HIV testing, and his results come back as follows. His HIV-1-2 antibody antigen combination test is interpreted as reactive, his HIV antibody result is indeterminate, and his HIV-2 antibody result is non-reactive. 
How would you interpret this patient's test results? Please select the appropriate answer from the screen and click Submit. The correct answer in this circumstance is D, all of the above. This sequence of results means the patient might have acute HIV infection with a reactive fourth generation assay and an indeterminate antibody test. He might be HIV positive, an individual who has already established his HIV infection, and his test results might be false positive. The explanation for this circumstance comes down to the FDA approved antibody differentiation assay, the multispot. The multispot has two markers or indicators for HIV-1. One is a recombinant peptide and the other is a synthetic peptide. Uh, and in order to have a positive result on this assay, both of those markers must be present. If only one marker is present, the result is considered indeterminate. Indeterminate results with the multispot in occur, occur in about 1% of specimens that are reactive with multispot. When we looked at these specimens, between 10 and 15% of specimens with indeterminate results, those with only one marker, proved to actually be HIV negative. Uh, the, because this test detects only HIV IgG, it is possible that one spot being present might represent early infection and it would evolve to develop both spots. In this cir circumstance, you would resolve the indeterminate result with a viral load. A high viral load would suggest acute HIV infection. And so in the Genius assay, the new HIV-1 differentiation assay, it has a sequence of eight possible different test results. Of those, three results give you an indeterminate result, an HIV-1 indeterminate, HIV-2 indeterminate, or an HIV indeterminate. In all of these circumstances, it would require additional testing in order to resolve the meaning of the indeterminate result after a reactive fourth generation assay and an indeterminate antibody differentiation assay. And so as we look at this individual with this set of results, a reactive fourth generation assay and an indeterminate antibody test, what would be the next step in order to resolve his HIV status? Would you tell the patient he's HIV negative? Would you order an RNA test? Would you repeat his HIV testing in three months? Or would you diagnose him as HIV positive and link him to HIV care? Please select the answer from the screen and click Submit after you made your choice. The correct answer is B. In this circumstance, you would order an RNA test. On this following slide, we now look at the results. An RNA test is ordered and the results come back as follow. The HIV-1 RNA by PCR is greater than 10 million copies. Uh, the log result of the quantitative test is greater than 7 log and RNA is considered detected by PCR interpretation. For this patient now, how would you interpret these test results? With a reactive fourth generation assay, an indeterminate antibody test result, and a positive viral load at a very high level. Please select your answer from the screen and click Submit after you've made your choice. The correct answer in this sequence of test results is B. The patient has an acute HIV infection. It's very important that you discuss these screening test results with this patient and explain HIV. Because his viral load is extremely high, he is early infection and he is extremely infectious. You need to advise him to use condoms, to avoid sharing needles, and to make a follow-up plan with this patient to link him for immediate care to his Ryan White Clinic. We're now on to case study number three. This is a 25-year-old African-American female who presents for her annual primary care provider checkup. She's had two male sex partners in her lifetime and she does not use injection drugs. You screen for her for HIV and the complete test results are shown on the screen. Her HIV-1-2 antigen antibody combination assay result is reactive. Her HIV-1 antibody result on the differentiation assay is indeterminate. The HIV RNA PCR quantitative result is less than 20 copies, which is a log result of less than 1.3. And the interpretation of the RNA test result is not detected. How would you interpret this patient's HIV test results? Does it mean that she's A, HIV positive, B, she's HIV negative, or C, do you need more testing to determine her HIV status? Please select the appropriate answer from the screen and click Submit after you've made your selection. With these test results, the correct answer is B, this patient is HIV negative. The next question is, in this sequence of events, with this patient who is being screened as part of her annual checkup, what would you do next? Would you repeat the HIV tests because of the indeterminate result? Would you recommend repeat testing for her if her risk factors change? Or would you recommend repeat testing at least annually for HIV? 
Please select the correct answer from the screen and click Submit after you've made your selection. In this circumstance, the correct answer is B. You would recommend repeat testing for HIV only if this patient risk factors change, for example, having a new sex partner. Uh, annual retesting is recommended only for individuals who have increased risk for HIV, such as multiple sex partners, a history of injection and drug use, or the occurrence of a new sexually transmitted infection. This next case study is a 37-year-old Latino male who presents to his primary care provider complaining of eye pain and vision problems. He discloses he has had multiple female partners, but no male sex partners. He denies injection drug use, but he consents to an HIV screening and his test, test results come back as follows. His fourth generation HIV-1-2 antigen antibody combination assay result is reactive. His HIV antibody result on the differentiation assay is also reactive. His HIV-2 antibody result is non-reactive. How would you interpret this patient's test results? Do they indicate the patient is HIV negative? Do you indicate the patient is HIV positive? or is more testing needed to determine his HIV status. Please select your preferred answer from the screen and click Submit after you have made your selection. The correct answer is B. This patient is HIV positive. According to the new recommended testing algorithm from the CDC, a repeatedly reactive fourth generation combination assay followed by a reactive antibody differentiation test indicates the presence of HIV infection. In fact, established HIV infection. In this circumstance now, what would you do next for this patient who is HIV infected given his complaints of eye pain and vision problems? Would you order an HIV-1 viral load test? Would you request an ophthalmology consult? Would you diagnose the patient as HIV positive and link him to care? Or would you do all of the above? Please select the answer from the screen and click Submit after you've made your choice. The preferred answer is D, all of the above. Certainly, you would diagnose this patient as HIV positive and link him to HIV care. As part of the initial evaluation, you would usually do an HIV-1 viral load test as well as other tests such as a CD4 count. You certainly would want to request an ophthalmology consult because in an HIV infected patient with visual symptoms including vision problems and eye pain, it might indicate the presence of an, of an opportunistic infection. Our next case study is a 28-year-old Caucasian man who has sex with men who requests HIV testing from his primary care provider. He had unprotected anal sex with an anonymous partner he met online five days ago. He's healthy and he has no medical complaints. You screen him for HIV using the fourth generation HIV screening test. His result comes back non-reactive. What do you tell this patient? He shouldn't worry, he's HIV negative. He should return for a repeat test in two weeks and discuss his safer sex options. He should come back in three months for HIV retesting. Please select the correct answer from the screen and click Submit after you've made your selection. In this circumstance, the correct answer is B. You should ask this patient to return in two weeks for a repeat HIV test. If you remember our schema of HIV infection and laboratory markers, there is an interval between 10 and 14 days between the time of infection and the time that the fourth generation test becomes positive. Since this patient's last contact, a high risk contact of an unprotected anal intercourse was only five days ago, it is possible that he acquired HIV infection, but the test has not yet developed a positive result, so it should be repeated. And in the meantime, the patient should behave in a way to prevent the possibility of transmitting HIV infection to someone else if he is at the stage of early HIV infection. The next case study is a 26-year-old black man who has sex with other men who presents with a cough and a sore throat. He has had two sex partners in the past year. He has never been outside the United States and he accepts HIV screening. His results come back as shown. His HIV-1-2 fourth generation antigen antibody combination assay is reactive. His HIV-1 antibody test result is reactive and his HIV-2 antibody test result is reactive. How would you interpret this patient's test results? Does it mean that he is duly infected with both HIV-1 and HIV-2? Is he most likely infected with HIV-1? Or do you think this represents the patient has acute HIV infection? Please select your preferred answer from the screen and click Submit after you've made your selection. The correct answer is B. This patient is most likely infected with HIV-1. In this circumstance where you have reactive results on the fourth generation assay and for both HIV-1 and HIV-2 antibodies, what would you do next? Would you order an HIV-1 RNA test? Would you order an HIV-2 RNA test? 
would you ask this patient about sex partners from West Africa or some combination of those options? Please select the appropriate option from the screen and click Submit after you've made your selection. The correct answer is E, both A and C. Order an HIV-1 viral load test and ask this patient about any sex partners from West Africa. An HIV-1, HIV-2 undifferentiated result is one in which both HIV-1 and HIV-2 are reactive. With the multi-spot differentiation assay, about one half of 1% of reactive specimens give this result of an undifferentiated test result. CDC recommends that further investigation for HIV-2 is, should be done if it's clinically indicated. That would be if the HIV-1 RNA is undetectable on the viral load assay conducted as part of the initial medical workup, or if the patient has some epidemiologic link to an HIV-2 endemic area such as West Africa. That is the reason for doing both the HIV-1 viral load test, which would be part of his usual medical workup, and to investigate the possibility of any likelihood of exposure for HIV-2. The next slide in this series is to ask basically what you would interpret the results when they come back as follows. His HIV-1 RNA PCR is 150,000 copies, a log result of 5.2. The interpretation is that HIV-1 RNA was detected. So therefore, how would you interpret this patient's test results? Does it mean that he is HIV negative? that he has acute HIV infection, that he is HIV positive but not acutely infected, or do you still need more testing in order to make a diagnosis? Please select the option from the screen and click Submit after you've made your choice. The correct answer here is C. This patient is HIV positive, but he does not have acute HIV infection. This is corroborated by the presence of IgG antibodies on the differentiation assay, as well as an intermediate level of viral load that is not really consistent with acute. HIV infection. Our next case study involves a 28-year-old woman who presents to the emergency department with abdominal pain. She's four months pregnant. She has a history of injection drug use and consents to HIV screening. Her results come back as shown on the screen. Her HIV-1-2 antigen antibody combination test is reactive. Her HIV-1 antibody test result is reactive. Her HIV-2 antibody result is non-reactive. How would you interpret these patients' test results? Do they mean that she's HIV positive? Do they indicate that she's HIV negative? Or do you think that more testing is needed in order to make an interpretation? Please select the correct result from the screen and click Submit after you've made your selection. This sequence of test results indicates the correct answer is A. This patient is HIV positive. In a pregnant woman who is HIV positive with these test results, you have a reactive combination fourth generation assay as well as a reactive antibody assay which confirms the presence of HIV infection. The question now on the next slide is what would you do next in this circumstance with these test results? Would you order a viral load test? Would you tell this woman is, that she is HIV positive and to follow up at the HIV clinic after she delivers? Would you give her a diagnosis of HIV positive and link her to high risk obstetric care or would there be some combination of the above? Please make your selection from those listed on the screen and click Submit after you've made your choice. The correct answer in this sequence is D. You would both order an HIV-1 viral load RNA test and tell this patient she is HIV positive and link her to high-risk obstetric care. It is very important for a pregnant woman who is HIV infected to receive antiretroviral prophylaxis in order to prevent transmission to her infant. There are other specific obstetric indications and interventions that can be conducted in order to reduce the risk for transmission. In this patient who also has a history of injection drug use, it would be very important as well to evaluate her for the presence of hepatitis C infection. Our next case is a 43-year-old man who presents to the emergency department with nausea and diarrhea. He is originally from Sierra Leone and has been in the United States for four years. He has been married to his wife for 19 years. He screened for HIV and his test results are as follows. His fourth generation HIV-1-2 combination assay is reactive. His HIV-1 antibody result is non-reactive and his HIV-2 antibody result is reactive. How would you interpret these test results? Does it mean this patient is HIV-1 positive? Is the patient HIV-2 positive? Does it indicate that he's HIV negative or is more HIV testing needed in order to resolve his status? Please make your selection from the screen and click Submit when you are done. 
These results mean that this patient is HIV-2 positive. The combination of a positive HIV-2 antibody test and a history of contact or emigration from Sierra Leone, West Africa, a place where HIV-2 is endemic, is very convincing evidence that this patient has HIV-2 infection. The continuation of this case is what would you do next in this circumstance? Would you order an HIV-2 viral load test? Would you consult a specialist in HIV-2? Would you report this as a case of public health significance to the CDC, or would you do all of the above? Please make your selection and click Submit when you have completed it. The correct answer in this circumstance is all of the above. You would obtain testing specifically for HIV-2, but it would be important to consult an HIV-2 specialist. HIV-2 infection remains uncommon in the United States, but it does not respond to the non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors and some of the protease inhibitors, which are first-line therapy for HIV. HIV-2 is undetectable by HIV-1 viral load tests, so specific testing needs to be done. HIV-2 was also misclassified by the HIV-1 Western blot. In the past, in New York City, where a large number of HIV-2 cases have been identified, 93% of the patients with HIV-2 infection had an HIV-1 Western blot result interpreted as positive for HIV-1. It's important to conduct, to consult a specialist as well. Even though some laboratories may offer HIV-2 viral load testing, HIV-2 RNA is undetectable in at least half of HIV-2 infected patients. Therefore, testing for proviral DNA may be required for a definitive diagnosis of HIV-2. Because HIV-2 is uncommon in the United States, it is considered a case of public health importance and should be reported to the CDC, who can also offer assistance in providing the HIV-2 proviral DNA testing. This brings us to the end of the case study presentations on the interpretation of the HIV diagnostic algorithm that begins with the fourth generation antigen antibody combination assay. Thank you for participating in this online presentation with us today. If you have any questions, you can contact Alyssa Guido at the Arizona AIDS Education and Training Center, whose email address is listed on this slide. In order to now complete this training session, you will need to proceed to the evaluation and post-test questionnaire. Again, thank you for your participation. Hope that you have enjoyed it.